Hello Grade 7's Natural Sciences, I'm Helen and the focus of our lesson today is investigating conduction. Now let's just recap what we learned about conduction so far. Remember that conduction is just one way in which heat energy is transferred and important for you to remember about conduction is the idea of touching. You remember these children passed on a little squeeze of the hand because they were touching each other. But if we had to put another child out here, this child would not feel the squeeze because he is not touching the last person in the line. So conduction is a transfer of thermal or heat energy between objects that are touching. We also established that not all materials conduct heat in the same way. We learned from our last lesson that metal appeared to be a far better conductor of heat energy than, for example, a wooden spoon. We also learned that solids conduct heat energy better than gases or liquids and that is because the solid particles are close to each other or the particles of the material are close to each other in a solid so when they start to vibrate they bump against other particles that are next to them and they thus conduct the energy from themselves, from their little particle, and the heat energy spread to neighboring particles. So that is what we learned in our last lesson about conduction. Now let's have a look at an investigation into how metal conducts heat energy. So we have an experimental setup here where we've got a non-flammable base to which we attach a metal pole and we've got a little plastic clamp which is going to hold a metal rod. Now the reason we're not going to hold it with our fingers is because we would burn our fingers eventually and that would be dangerous. So we use a plastic clamp to hold the metal rod in a horizontal position. We also need a heat source. And in this case, our heat source is called a Bunsen burner, which you will find in science laboratories. But you could easily do the investigation using a candle or any other kind of gas burner. So our metal rod is in a horizontal position and we are only heating the one end of the rod. When we start off, we can feel that the metal rod is cold. So we would say that we've got a hot object, we've got a cold object, so we expect from what we understand about transfers of heat energy, that heat energy is going to be transferred from the hotter end of our substance, the metal rod, to the colder end. And what we're going to see is precisely that. We're going to see that as the time passes, the rod gets hotter and hotter, but in a horizontal manner. And it certainly seems like heat energy is being transferred. If we have to explain this in terms of the particles making up the rod, so now we can see our metal rod, if we had super magic eyes that could magnify it, and now we could see the little particles, we would see that the particles that are directly in contact with our heat source are going to start vibrating because they now have more kinetic energy. And because the metal is a solid, we understand that the particles in the solid are quite close together. 
So that means that as these little particles that are under our heat source are starting to vibrate more and more, they're going to collide with each other. The space between them is going to extend. And this means that this collision will occur all the way down this metal rod until right at the end we've got a very very warm metal rod right to the end of the rod and we can say that the metal rod has conducted the heat energy from the heat source down to the cooler part of the metal rod. Can we prove that the metal rod is conducting heat energy along its length. Now, yes, we could touch it with our finger, but that would be rather silly because our finger would then burn. So we need to find a different way to prove that the heat is moving from the heat source. This picture is reversed to this one here. The heat source was on the left hand side and moved from left to right. In this picture, we've got a, a heat source as being another kind of gas burner. And we need to show that the heat is going to move down our metal rod. So what we do is we prepare the metal rod with a number of nails or thumbtacks or drawing pins. And we secure each little nail or drawing pin to the metal rod using some wax. Now we know from our experience with candles that wax melts when it gets warm. So we take some little blobs of wax, we drop these little blobs of wax at regular intervals along our metal rod. We then put a little thumbtack drawing pin onto each of these little blobs of hot wax. The wax then gets cool and solidifies and we take that rod and we hang it up or we clamp it into position over our heat source. And what we see is these little nails or thumbtacks start falling off the rod as the wax gets hot. When the wax gets hot, it's going to melt and it no longer keeps the little drawing pin in place. And we will see that our drawing pins fall off, not randomly. We don't see one here and one there. We see that they fall off in order. As the heat is conducted up the metal rod or along the length of the metal rod, so we see our little metal object thumbtacks falling off the metal rod. Another way we could prove that the metal rod is conducting heat energy is to take our same original setup of the clamp holding the metal rod and this time we could make sure that we have a thermometer. Remember a thermo meaning heat Meter or measurer, thermometer, is going to be able to measure the temperature of the bar. And we will see that close to the heat source, our temperature is high. Slightly further away, the temperature is slightly lower. Where the metal rod is just warm, the temperature is even lower to where the heat energy hasn't yet been conducted. So we could say, we could draw a graph, and we could say that on our one axis, and it's going to represent our uh, temperature, we're going to measure our temperature in degrees Celsius, and here we're going to have it as cold, and here we're going to have it as hot, and along this axis, we're going to measure distance from the heat source. I hope you can read that because I'm writing sideways. So here it's going to be close to the heat source. 
and here it's going to be far from the heat source. So very close to the heat source, our temperature is going to be really hot. As we move further away, in other words, down the rod towards the colder part, so our metal rod is going to be colder and colder. And so we're going to be able to draw a graph that shows that as the temperature increases, we can notice that we've moved closer and closer and closer to our heat source itself. Will all materials produce similar patterns of conductive behavior? Now I want you to remember back to the last lesson when we learned about Chris and Chloe making their hot soup and Chris burning his fingers on the hot metal spoon. And Chloe gave him the wooden spoon and said, this won't get as hot. So we now want to investigate, do all metals or all materials produce similar patterns of conductive behavior? So in this investigation, we're going to use our little blob of wax. And into that, we're going to implant our little nail or drawing pin. We're going to let the wax go solid again. And then we're going to hang two rods equal distance away from our heat source. But instead of using the same metal, we're going to use a different metal for each rod. Do you remember back to what I taught you previously? What is FE the symbol for? Shout it out. You should know that. That is an iron rod. And Cu is cuprium or copper. So we're going to take a copper rod and an iron rod with our little thumbtacks or drawing pins attached to them. We're going to warm up. We're going to transfer the heat energy to the end of both rods and we're going to observe what happens. And it certainly seems that the little drawing pins start falling off much quicker along the copper rod and it takes much longer for them to fall off the iron rod. And how does this then translate into conductivity? Well, our copper is a far better conductor of heat energy than what the iron is. The iron is metal and it certainly conducts heat energy, but our copper conducts it faster. So here is a super challenge for you. Katie has tiles in her bathroom, but there's a little carpet that Katie stands on at the basin to brush her teeth. In winter, Katie says that these tiles are at a lower temperature than her carpet. So she says that the carpet temperature is higher than the tiles because the carpet feels warmer under her feet. Is Katie correct? All right, have you felt this? Have you experienced this as well? Are the tiles colder than the carpet in the same room? Well, Katie sadly is not correct. The tiles and the carpet are at the same temperature. They're both in the same environment. However, the tiles are better conductors of heat energy than what the carpet is. So the tiles conduct the heat energy faster from Katie's feet than the carpet would. And this makes the tiles seem colder, but in fact, they're actually at the same temperature as the carpet. So the tiles and the carpet are at the same temperature, but it's like the tiles are better at conducting the heat energy out of your nice warm feet. And so they feel 
colder because you're losing heat energy from the soles of your feet. So wear your slippers when you go into your bathroom or into your kitchen where there are cold tiles this winter and you won't allow those tiles to suck out your heat energy like that. All right, more about heat energy transfers next time, guys. I will look forward to spending some time with you, but for today, that's it for Natural Sciences. Bye. Thank you.